are seen further than others, it is because I have stood from the shoulders of giants who have gone before me. Isaac Newton wrote in 1675 letter to his fellow scientist, Robert Hooke. Good day. I am Mom Jenny, your science teacher. Come and join me for another science class. Let's start. mathematician, astronomer, alchemist, inventor, and natural philosopher who is generally regarded as one of the most influential scientists in history. The popular myth tells of an apple falling from a tree in his garden which put Newton to an understanding of forces, particularly gravity. Whether the incident actually happened is unknown, but historians doubt the event. If it occurred, it was the driving force in Newton's thought process. His most famous work came with the publication of his Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, generally called Principia. In it, he determined the three laws of motion for the universe. When Galileo challenged Aristotelian notions about motion by performing experiments, he not only changed man's concept of motion, but also called for others to challenge the theories he had set forth. Isaac Newton, using inductive reasoning and taking his cue from the Galileo's works, Galileo's principle of inertia, formulated a law that describes what Galileo had discovered about inertia in his thought experiments. Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia. Before we discuss Newton's first law, let me show you some pictures which has something to do with the first law of motion. I know that some of you, yung iba sa inyo ay nakasakay na sa ganitong klaseng ride. A car accident. Some forms of sports. and uh, a dryer. Now, you might be wondering, anong kaugnay ng mga pictures na pinakita ko sa inyo sa uh, topic natin ngayon, which is Newton's first law of motion. Your questions will be answered after we perform an activity and after we discuss this topic. So for today, for this topic, let's have an activity. It is entitled, Investigating Inertia. At the end of this activity, you should be able to demonstrate Newton's first law of motion. The materials that we need are as follows. One empty glass, cardboard, one peso coin, 5 to 10 pieces will do, and a ruler. Let's get started. For the first part of the activity, 
entitled, it is entitled Coin Drop. Step number one is arrange the setup as shown in the figure below. So you have an empty glass, a cardboard, and a coin. So ilalagay yung cardboard sa ilabaw ng baso at yung barya ay sa piraso lang sa ibabaw ng cardboard. Slowly pull the cardboard with your hands and observe what happens. Dahan-dahang hatakin ng cardboard at tingnan kung ano ang nangyayari. Let's watch this video that I prepared. So as you can see, dahan-dahang inahatak yung cardboard. Cardboard na nasa ibabaw ng basong walang laman at may piso sa ibabaw ng cardboard. Dahan-dahang inahatak ang cardboard. Question number one. What happens when you slowly pull the cardboard? Explain. Anong nangyari nung dahan-dahang inahatak ang cardboard? So, I, uh, I want you to answer this on your notebook. I'll give you 10 seconds. So, I'll play the video again. As shown, this time, quickly flick the cardboard with your finger. Observe what happens. Ilagay ulit yung cardboard sa ibabaw ng basong walang laman at maglagay ulit ang isang pirasong bariya. This time, quickly flick the cardboard with your finger. Pitikin ng mabilis. So, I prepared a video again. Let's watch. Cardboard on top of the empty glass and one peso coin, then quickly flick. Alright. What happens when you flick the cardboard? Anong nangyari nung pinitik mo yung cardboard? I will play the video again. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to write your answer on your notebook. Your time starts now. also use 5 peso coins. Stack the coins on a flat level surface. So, pagpatong-patungin ng barya sa flat level surface. Quickly hit the coin at the bottom with the edge of the ruler. Mabilis na patamaan yung pinakailalim ng barya na barya. Gamit ang pinakadulo, kilid, the edge of the ruler. Let's watch the video. Alright. Play it again. Question. What happens when you hit the coin at the bottom? Why is this so? Anong nangyari sa barya nung pinatamaan mo yung pinakailalim na barya gamit ang ruler? I will play the video again. Okay, please write your answer on your notebook 10 seconds. Up. 
Okay, let's answer the questions. Question number one. What happens when you slowly pull the, the cardboard? Explain. When you slowly pull the cardboard, the coin on top moves with the cardboard. We have the same observation. Handahan-dahan natin hinatak yung cardboard. Yung coin or yung barya ay nanatili sa ibabaw ng cardboard. Gumalaw yung cardboard kasama yung barya. Bakit kaya nanatili yung barya na nasa ibabaw ng cardboard? If you can still recall, one of the lessons that we have discussed about the types of forces is all about friction. The frictional force acting between the coin and the cardboard caused the coin to stay on top of the cardboard and move with it. Dahil may friction sa pagitan ng barya at ng cardboard na natili yung barya sa ibabaw ng cardboard. Kaya, nung hinatak natin or dahan-dahan natin hinatak yung cardboard, kasama yung barya sa paggalaw ng cardboard. Next, question number two. What happens when you flick the cardboard? When the coin was flipped or flicked quickly, the cardboard moved forward but the coin did not move with it. When the cardboard was removed from the underneath it, the coin dropped into the glass. Nung pinitip natin, yung cardboard, tumilapon papunta sa harap yung cardboard. Pero hindi na kasama yung coin sa cardboard at nalaglag ito sa loob ng baso. The coin did not move forward with the cardboard because of the tendency of the coin to stay at rest. So, nanatili yung cardboard dun sa kanyang kinalalagyan but we have to bear in mind that a force acts on the coin that causes it to drop inside or to fall inside the glass. Nalaglag yung barya because of what type of force? Very good. It is gravitational force or gravity. Kung walang gravity, mananatili lang yung barya na nasa ibabaw ng baso pagkatapos natin pitingin yung cardboard. But because gravity acts on all objects na wala na yung pinagpapatungan natin ng barya, that is the cardboard, yung barya or yung piso ay nalaglag sa ibabaw ng sa loob ng baso. Next, the stack of coins. What happens when you hit the coin at the bottom? Why is this so? When we hit the bottom coin with the edge of the ruler, it moves out from the pile of coins, but the other coins stay in place. So, nung pinatamaan natin ang ruler, yung pinakailalim na barya, sa pinagpatong-patong natin na barya, gumalaw or umalis sa kanyang initial na position yung barya na nasa ilalim. The inertia, take note, I use the term inertia, the inertia of the coins has caused them not to move out with the coin that was hit by the ruler. Ang gumalaw lang na barya ay yung tinamaan ng edge ng ruler. Pero yung mga barya na hindi tinamaan ng ruler, na natili itong magkakapatong at nasa ibabaw ng flat level surface. The examples above 
demonstrate the property of the object to resist any change in its state of motion. In physics, this property is known as inertia. The coin dropped into the glass because it was trying to remain in its state of rest. But what is inertia? Inertia is the resistance of any physical object to change in its state, either of rest or in motion. When an object is in motion, it wants to keep moving. When an object is at rest, it wants to keep at rest. Pag ang isang bagay ay gumagalaw, mananatili ito sa kanyang paggalaw. Pag ang isang bagay naman ay hindi gumagalaw, mananatili ito na hindi gumagalaw. That's according to Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object at rest tend to stay at rest, and an object in motion tend to stay in motion with the same speed and in the same direction, unless acted upon by an external net force. Take note of that. External net force. But what is an external net force? As the name implies, it is a force which is external to the object. Pag sinabi natin external, nasa labas. To get a car to move forward, you have to exert an external force on the car. You push from the outside. A push from the inside, kagaya na nakikita ninyo sa picture, the boy is pushing against the windshield, he is inside the car. A push from the inside the car would be an internal force which can never move the car forward no matter how hard you push. Kahit gano'n mo kalakas itulak yung sasakyan kung nasa loob ka naman, ay hindi mo ito kayang itulak kung ikaw ay nasa loob. So, ano ang marapat gawin para maitulak din sa sakyan? Tama. Correct. You have to go outside and push the car from the outside. Forces are always acting on objects. But if these forces are balanced, there will be no change in object's motion. Let's say a book lying on a table is being pulled down by gravity and pushed up by the table. Take note, the book lying on the table is acted upon by two types of forces the force exerted by gravity that is downward and the force exerted by the table we call it normal force which is upward these forces are balanced so the book will remain at rest unless some other external external force acts on it so itong libro na nasa ibabaw ng table ay mananatili lang na nasa table unless maliban na lang kung may external force that will act on it. May pwera sa namang gagaling sa labas ng libro na mag a dito. Pero hindi ito makakagalaw ng mag-isa or hindi ito makakagalaw kung ang pwera sa ay manggagaling sa loob ng libro. Kailangan ito ay manggaling sa labas ng libro. How about for forces or for objects which is in motion? A ball rolling on a flat level floor is also under two forces that are balanced. Gravity 
and the upward force on the floor. So without friction, the ball will just keep on moving at constant speed in a straight line. So yung bola na gumugulong sa makinis at patag na floor ay mananatili lang sa kanyang paggalaw. Hindi ito bibilis, hindi ito babagal or magbabago ng direksyon unless maka-encounter to ng friction. Say for example, nagkaroon ng bako-bako or hindi na makinis yung floor. So, let's continue. Applications of the first law of motion abound in daily life. Here are a few. Ever noticed how you tend to, to move forward when the bus driver steps on the brakes? Naranasan mo na ba na gumalaw yung katawan mo papunta sa harap kapag pumipreno na yung bus driver. Since you are in motion, you tend to keep moving whether the bus slows down. Dahil gumagalaw yung katawan mo habang gumagalaw yung bus, mananatili itong gumagalaw. On the other hand, you move back when the bus makes a sudden start. Kapag nakahinto ka naman, yung katawan mo, ay gumagalaw ng papunta sa likod kapag nagsimula ng umandar or when the bus starts moving. Since you are at rest, you tend to remain at rest and be left behind. So, karamihan naman sa atin ay nakasakay na ng bus. Pag bigyan mo minto, our body tends to move forward because our body wants to continue moving. While, when, uh, the bus is at rest, kapag hindi pa umaandar yung bus, and it starts, bigla itong gumalaw, our body tends to move backward because it is trying to stay at rest. Next is, if you jump off a moving bus, you will stumble. Kapag lumundag ka sa umaandar na bus, or let's say, for example, sumabit ka sa jeep at bigla kang lumundag habang gumagalaw pa yung jeep, pwede kang madapa. When you land, your feet stop moving but the rest of your body does not. Dahil yung sasakyan ay gumagalaw, yung katawan din natin ay gumagalaw. Kung bigla kang lumundag from the vehicle, your feet stops moving, pero yung buong katawan mo ay nananatiling gumagalaw. To keep from falling down, para hindi ka madapa or malaglag sa kalsada, you must run. Yes, you must run in the same direction as the bus. As you land, kailangan kung tatalun ka mula sa nasakyan, kailangan tumakbo ka rin ng kahit marahal lang papunta din sa direksyon ng nasakyan kung saan ito papunta. But you have to remember that hindi tama na sumasabit sa nasakyan. Let's say, for example, sa jeep, tapos sulundag ka. Maaksidente pa kayo at pwedeng masugatan. What are seat belts for? When your car smashes into something, it will come to a sudden stop. Unfortunately, you won't. You will tend to keep moving unless of course some force stops you. That's what the seat belt is for. It exerts a force that keeps you from moving forward. Without it, you will keep moving until the force exerted by the windshield stops you. So it's either you get stopped by the seat belt or with the windshield. Get your feet. So siguraduhin na pag sumasakay tayo sa mga kotse, kailangan isuot natin ang seat belt para 
kung sakali man na hihinto yung driver, bigla itong huminto, hindi tatama yung mukha natin sa windshield at maiiwasan ang aksidente. Some cars are designed with airbags uh, because it lessens the effects of accident para mas lesser yung uh, effect dun sa taong na aksidente. Measure of inertia. All objects have the tendency to resist changes in their state of motion or keep doing what they are doing. However, changing a body's state of motion depends on its inertia. A more massive object, which is more inertia, is more difficult to move from rest, slow down, speed up, or change its direction. So, mas mabigat yung isang bagay, mas mahirap itong pahintuin kung gumagalaw ito. Mas mahirap baguhin yung direction niya, at mas mahirap din siya ang pabilisin. Or, kung yung isang bagay ay hindi gumagalaw, at mas mabigat ito, mas mahirap itong pagalawin. Let's say, for example, a bus and a car. Alin ang mas mahirap itulak? Yung bus or yung kotse? Very good. Mas mahirap itulak ang bus. Bakit yung mas mahirap itulak yung bus? Kasi mas mabigat siya. Mas marami siyang inertia. Again, a more massive object has greater inertia. Kung mas mahirap siyang itulak, Kung mas mahirap siyang pagalawin, mas mahirap din siyang pahintuin kapag gumagalaw na siya. Whereas, yung vehicle na mas maliit, mas madaling pahintuin kapag gumagalaw, at mas mabilis or mas madaling itulak or pagalawin kapag hindi ito gumagalaw. So, can you figure it out now? Kung alin sa dalawa ang mas magtatamo ng mas matinding pinsala kapag nagkaroon ng aksidente. Huwag naman sa atin mangyari. Very good. It is the car. Now, let us go back to the pictures that I have shown you a while ago. First pictures are this... Uh, rides. So, yung mga rides na yung iba sa inyo ay nasubukan na na sakyan. It is let's say fun forms of inertia. Roller coasters. You have the feeling of getting thrown out from your seat as it goes up and down causing you to scream. Other rides stimulate a free fall. It is due to inertia that you feel as if you are not in your seat. Yun bang pakaramdam na pag nasa taas ka, biglang bubulusok pa baba? Parang naiwan, may naiwan dun sa taas. Do you agree? Alright, next is a dryer. Paano ba gumagana yung dryer? The water in the dryer gets thrown out due to the inertia being generated from the spinning. The purpose of the dryer is from the term itself, dryer, para matuyo yung damit. Ano bang uh, nangyayari sa dryer? Uh, di ba mabilis itong umiikot? So pag umiikot yung dryer, yung damit sa loob ay umiikot. Yung tubig na nasa basang damit ay umiikot din. So, the water in the dryer gets thrown out. Kung walang butas, 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 yung loob ng dryer, hindi tatapon palabas yung tubig. At hindi matutuyo yung damit. Kahit ganong pa katagal umikot ng umikot yung dryer, hindi matutuyo ang damit kung wala itong butas. If there was no inertia, then the water in the clothes would never leave no matter how long you kept spinning it. 
So there is inertia or application of Newton's first law every time that you dry your clothes using a dryer. So pwede sabihin kay nanay, kung nakita nyo sila o tinutulungan nyo sila na nagkapatuyo ng damit gamit ang dryer, Nanay, there is an application of Newton's first law of motion in dry clothes using a dryer. Next, in car accident. When a high-speed vehicle crashes against something, the objects within the car are thrown out because those objects want to remain in motion. And this inertia is due to their mass. Inertia is also the reason why the car changes shape in an accident. That is why, a while ago, we have learned that it is very important to wear seat belts. Pag nakita kayo ng driver na hindi nagsusuot ng seat belt, then we have to remind them politely for us to prevent accidents. And finally, we have discus throw, javelin throw, and shot put throw. In javelin throw, the thrower has to run before throwing the javelin because the inertia of javelin prevents it from going too far. So, kapag tumatakbo yung thrower, gumagalaw siya, yung hawak niya ay gumagalaw din. So, kaya mas madali na ito pagalawin. Kaya mas malayo yung uh, nagiging distance nung pagkakahagis sa uh, javelin. Next is you have shot put throw. It is difficult to throw the shot put because its inertia wants to keep it in rest. So, anong ginagawa? So, parang ang tawag natin dun sa Filipino ay sumasagida para mas maitapo ng mas malayo yung shot put. And then lastly, discus throw. The discus will not go very far in the thrower or if the thrower doesn't spin to an optimum speed. So, yung discus thrower, pinapaikot niya pa tong discus habang iniikot yung kanyang mga braso para mas maitapo niya ito ng mas malayo. So, remember that in uh, Newton's first law, an object at rest will remain at rest. Yung bagay na hindi gumagalaw, mananatiling hindi gumagalaw. At yung bagay na gumagalaw, an object in motion will continue moving. Mananatiling gumagalaw along a straight line, a straight path, at constant velocity. Hindi pipilis, hindi babagal, unless maliba na lang, it is acted upon by an external net force. Maliba na lang kung merong pwersang manggagaling sa labas. Alright. Let us have a short quiz. Let's start with question number one. Jamie's mom asked her to buy 8 kg of rice and 6 kg of sweet potato. Compared to 8 kg of rice, 6 kg of sweet potato has letter A, Less mass and less inertia. Letter B, more mass and less inertia. Letter C, less mass and more inertia. And finally, letter D, more mass and more inertia. So, yung nanay daw ni Jamie ay pinabili siya ng 8 kg ng rice and 6 kg of sweet potato. Compared to 8 kilograms of rice, 6 kilograms of sweet potato has, so here are your choices. 5 seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is, compared to 8 kilograms of rice, 6 kilograms of sweet potato has less mass and less inertia. Mas mabigat yung... 8 kilograms of rice. Therefore, it has more inertia compared to 6 kilograms of sweet potato. Next. Number 2. You are riding fast on a skateboard when your wheel suddenly gets stuck in a crack on the sidewalk. Why does your body go flying forward? Next. 
Nakasakay ka, nakasakay ka ng skateboard, biglang nabalalak ba ang tawag doon, may lubak, sa sidewalk, bigla kang yung katawan mo, go flying forward, tumilapon ka. Why? A. There is a net force pushing you off your skateboard. B. Your inertia keeps you moving forward. C. Someone pushed you. And letter D. Because you are riding fast. Give you 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. The answer is letter B. Your body go fly forward because your inertia keeps you moving forward. Remember that an object in motion will continue moving. Your body will continue to move even if the skateboard stops because the wheel suddenly gets stuck unless something prevents your body from moving. Eh, hindi naman tayo nagsusuot ng seatbelt kapag naka-skateboard tayo. So, ang tendency, titilapon ka hanggang sa bumagsak ka na lang sa lupa because of gravity. Number three, a card and a coin are set up on top of a glass as shown in the figure. What will happen to the coin if the card is given a quick push? Ito ay ginawa na natin sa activity natin. Letter A. It will accelerate forward and land on the table. B. It will accelerate backward and land on the table. C. It will drop into the glass. And letter D. It will fly forward then drop into the glass. 5 seconds 5 4 3 2 1 The answer is letter C It will drop into the glass So nakita naman natin sa ginawa nating activity that when uh, we quickly flick or if we give a quick push on uh, the cardboard, the coin will drop into the glass. And number four, a person in a head-on car collision who is not wearing a seatbelt continues to move forward at the original speed of the car because of A. Gravity B. Friction C. Inertia And letter D. Weight 5 4 3 2 And 1 The answer is letter C. Inertia yung taong na aksidente uh, pag hindi siya nakasuot ng seatbelt mananatiling gumagalaw yung katawan niya sa original speed nung sasakyan, nung hindi pa ito na aksidente dahil we have learned that an object in motion will continue moving unless an external force stops it from moving. So dahil hindi siya nakasuot ng seatbelt mananatiling siyang gumagalaw ang tamama yung mukha or yung katawan sa windshield or sa manibela. Huwag naman sanang mangyari. That is why it is very important for us to wear seatbelts. That's a constant reminder. So, thank you for attending my class. I hope you learned a new lesson in science today. See you again next time. Bye-bye!